part five, we're gonna just do some practice with classical conditioning because we need practice. So here we go. So first of all, here's kind of a graphic um, before conditioning. So before conditions, you have this natural response. Remember, classical conditioning is just you don't have any control over. You make these associations. You have no control over these events that happen outside of your control. Okay, Pavlov dog. I don't have control when Pavlov brings the food. I don't have control when I salivate. I don't have control when Pavlov rings the bell. I don't have control of any of it. All right, so um, for here we go. So we got our unconditioned stimulus, and our unconditioned stimulus is Christmas. What does the unconditioned stimulus do? What does Christmas do? Your unconditioned response, right? This stimulus, unconditioned response, unconditioned response is you're happy, you're excited, you're joyful, you got you think about family, right? So you think about Christmas, you, you have these feelings. You can't not have those feelings um, unless you have some other type of conditioning that makes you feel bad about Christmas. But this is just what naturally happens, right? Um, before conditioning, right, this would be Coca-Cola be a neutral stimulus. Coca-Cola neither makes you feel sad, happy, in, you're just indifferent about it. It's a soda, right? Uh, Coca-Cola does a really good job with their marketing campaign trying to make you feel things, which is what we're going to see here. And that's what all products try to do, right? When they're advertising, they try to make you feel something for the product. Um, but just naturally a soda, you don't have any special things for it. So you have no emotions. You have no response to it, right? Um, so then you see the, the Christmas commercials, right? Where you see Santa and Coca-Cola and Santa Claus is running around with with polar bears that are rolling around in the snow and you have this great music. And so you start to pair this Christmas, this unconditioned stimulus, with this conditioned stimulus, right? You compare Christmas and Coca-Cola, compare, um, combine them, and now you start to feel the same thing you feel for Christmas, but you, you see when you have the, the soda there, it's paired with the Coca-Cola and Christmas now you're starting to feel the same thing when you see the Coca-Cola. And so now the Coca-Cola becomes a conditioned stimulus and this becomes a conditioned response. Remember the conditioned response and the unconditioned response are always the same, right? They're always the same. So um, you're always going to feel the same way. So that's the, that's the point of what advertising is, right? So here we go. Okay. When Micah gets back to the dormitory after jogging around the campus, he likes to take a quick shower before going to class. One morning while taking a shower, he hears someone flushing a nearby toilet. Oh, suddenly extremely hot water comes rushing out of the shower head, and Micah experiences excruciating pain. After muttering a few obscenities, he continues showering. A few minutes later, Micah hears another toilet flush, and he leaps out of the shower. Okay, so the unconditioned stimulus is what right so the unconditioned stimulus what are you going to just do naturally a uh, hot water right the unconditioned stimulus is that is when hot water makes you jump or it's uncomfortable right makes you jump hot water makes you jump hot water makes you scream hot water you don't want to be around right um the neutral stimulus at the beginning maybe a little bit harder to see what's does it the neutral stimulus would be the toilet flushing toilet flushing doesn't have anything, uh, toilet flushing, doesn't have anything, uh, emotion or any reaction to it, right? It's a neutral stimulus, okay? Okay, then we got the, um, unconditioned response. That would be right here. That's actually the unconditioned response is equal to jump or pain or something like that, right? Okay, so then what does the conditioned response become? Right, so the conditioned response, remember the conditioned response and the unconditioned response are always going to be the same, so we can always answer that question before we even look. So we're either going to you know, jump out of the shower um, and start to feel the pains. But what happens is we, right, we pair, the key, the magic happens is when you pair the unconditioned stimulus with the neutral stimulus, you pair these two things together. So we pair this hot water with the toilet flushing, and then the neutral stimulus jumps down here and becomes the conditioned stimulus, right? And so the flushing, as we see here, after muttering his obscenities, he continues showering, he hears another toilet flush, and he leaps out of the shower, right? So 
the neutral stimulus always becomes the conditioned stimulus and the conditioned responses, the responses are always the same. All right, let's do another example. Molly was ecstatic when she learned her family was going to the state fair next weekend. When her family arrived at the fair, the temperature was in excess of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But Molly didn't care because she was finally there. Molly stopped to watch some clowns performing next to the carousel. As she watched the silly antics of the clowns with the carousel music playing in the background, Molly got more and more sweaty and uncomfortable. Eventually, she fainted from the heat. After that trip to the state fair, every time Molly hears carousel music, she feels a little dizzy. Okay, so let's start off here with poor, poor Molly. So the unconditioned stimulus, right? What's the unconditioned stimulus? That's the thing that just naturally happens, whatever. When you have this unconditioned stimulus present, something's gonna happen. And so the um, unconditioned stimulus is extreme heat, right? Extreme heat is gonna cause you to act some, some way, right? So extreme heat, so this is over 100 degrees for poor Molly right um the neutral stimulus the stimulus that we have no response to is the carousel music carousel music right now you may you yourself might have some sort of uh response to carousel music because you've previously paired your carousel music with this nice feeling when you were a child but molly never did that so this carousel music for her is just music all right now, the unconditioned response, right? So the unconditioned stimulus leads to the unconditioned response. These two things always go together. The unconditioned stimulus is unconditioned. It just happens. We have an unconditioned stimulus. What follows is the unconditioned response. So what, what happens when you have an unconditioned stimulus? You, extreme heat, causes Molly to faint, right? So Molly can't handle the heat. Quite literally, so Molly faints when she gets extreme heat. All right, now remember, we pair these guys right here. We pair the unconditioned stimulus and the neutral stimulus. We pair fainting, or I'm sorry, we pair the extreme heat with the carousel music, and the extreme heat made her faint, but she was listening to the carousel music, so she was pairing those two things together. Um, and then all of a sudden, we've got conditioned stimulus and a conditioned response. Once again, remember, we can always answer the response. The responses are always the same. You faint. And then the neutral stimulus always becomes the conditioned stimulus. So unconditioned, you do it naturally. The conditioned stimulus is whatever used to be neutral. And so the carousel music in this case is the conditioned stimulus. So carousel music now, since it was paired with the with the um, extreme heat before, which causes the faint, is now what's going to cause us to maybe not feel faint, faint, but what's precursor to fainting, maybe feeling dizzy, right? Here's carousel music. It feels a little dizzy, right? So there you go. Uh, one more. Here we go. Let's do this one quick. Ryan was really looking forward to lunch because his mother had prepared a tuna salad sandwich. Ryan's kind of gross, dude. Not looking forward to that lunch. Although tuna salad's good, not going to be my favorite lunch. Sorry, Bob. Unfortunately, the mayonnaise she'd used had been left out for too long. See, that's why I don't like it. Ryan's mom's stupid and was spoiled. Not long after eating the sandwich, Ryan felt sick and had to rush to the bathroom. Ooh. Therefore, the, more, the mere mention of a tuna sandwich would make Ryan nauseous. Okay, so let's look at this. Unconditioned stimulus. What's unconditioned here is that spoiled is spoiled mayonnaise, right? Spoiled mayo. Right, that's gonna make anybody uh, have to run to the bathroom. Neutral stimulus and unconditioned response. Remember, the unconditioned stimulus always leads to the unconditioned response. What does spoiled mayo do? Spoiled mayo, let's put this conditioned uh, stimulus, conditioned response. Just write them all out right now. Uh, remember, those two act together. What does spoiled mayo do? That makes you go to the bathroom. That's where you're sicky, sicko. Right? Um, when you pair these two now, let's pair the unconditioned stimulus and the neutral stimulus of spoiled mayo, but what did he pair that with? He paired that with the tuna, or the mention of tuna, right? He paired that with the tuna, pairs those two things together, and remember, um, the, condition, the responses are always the same, so nauseous when you get sick in the bathroom, right? So this is going to be the 
nauseous feeling and the condition stimulus. Remember the neutral stimulus always becomes a condition stimulus. So when he heard tuna, he gets nauseous because that's what he felt when he was going to the bathroom the first time. All right, hopefully those uh, were some good examples for you. Good luck, Godspeed, and may the force be with you.